luxury of walking in a crop, several crop circles with my son in 2010, which was a most wonderful experience. Going to the Silent Circle Cafe, looking up on the map at all the little pointers as to where the next crops had turned up. Then getting in the car, driving off into the middle of nowhere to find a crop, walking into it and then finding a bunch of hippies with all sorts of paraphernalia, feathers and beads and crystals doing their little ceremonies in the middle. And people with compasses showing you how the compass showed there was a change of magnetic field. And um, in one of them, I was most incredibly excited because my feet started buzzing. Oh, wow. Like electricity charging through my feet. I was blown away. And it lasted for two weeks. <coughs> it stayed in my feet for two weeks. So I thought, well, that one certainly wasn't man-made. And um, anyway, I just wanted to tell you that little story as an aside. Now, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Horace Drew today. Horace is an absolute expert in decoding and analysing crop circles, and he's been doing this for 10 years. He can look at it and look at the mathematical equations and the codes and explain what kind of predictions they're implying. Um, Horace has a um, science, he's done science research. He was a student at Caltech, which is one of the top um, science schools in the world. He has um, focused on the structure of DNA and its role in molecular biology and health. Our group at Caltech did the first structure at high resolution of normal right-handed DNA in 1980 by X-ray diffraction from single crystals. He says, we also discovered a graduate level, is that right? Have I got it right? No, Doesn't matter. You can explain it, Horace. Okay. I won't let I won't try and explain it. It's all too scientific for me. <laughs> the fact is, what excites us today is because Horace has this focus on crop circles and periodically sends out his analysis and how it relates to current events, which he's going to discuss with you today. So in addition to being an expert scientist in the field of DNA, he is the person who worked with Bill Chalker on the book Hair of the Alien and did the analysis on the hair which Peter Curry revealed. So that, that's the same gentleman, if I might say so, Horace. Do you mind me revealing that? Not by myself, but we had a team. You were a team, right. He was part of a team. Secret team. So, without further ado, please Chief welcome King. Dr. Horace Wall Street. Well. <laughs> Amazing. Shall I use this? Yes, please do. Please do. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. What I'm going to do is go very slowly. I presume you know nothing about crop circles. I presume you know nothing about crop circles. And and then at some point, if I run out of time, we have a lot of slides, Mariana will tell me to switch the new ones from 2015 so you can see the very latest ones, which are at the end. So I'm going to go through and see how far we get. And you can quick question if you want. And then we'll flip to the very end and see what's new, what are the really latest ones. I'll have a bunch of the latest ones here, not all. And the reason I got interested in crop circles, first I was doubtful. But what they are, you have all these things flying in the sky. People terrified, happy. Crop circles are an encyclopedia of star knowledge. So not, they're not just flying, they're teaching us all these things. So I thought, and you'll see in just a second, better just to show you. So I thought, beautiful pictures, mathematical things, new ways to make energy, time travel, cosmology. So as a scientist, I said, oh, I'm a bit ahead of us, we better start study this. <laughs> so slowly I've been doing it for about 10 years. I'm quite confident this now, 2015, that I understand what most of them mean. But they're very sophisticated and I can't, I don't know if I'll be able to explain everything. You have to be quite a good mathematician and, and all that. So let's just get started. And that's how I did it, because it's such an advanced form of science. This beautiful phenomenon, what do they represent? This was, these are just pictures to get you started. I was at that one in the Swallows, 2008. These are people. 10,000 people were coming home from London every day to see it. It was just spectacular. And has modern science failed to study crop pictures properly by using real evidence and facts? 
Academic science has gotten many important things wrong in the past, and this is perhaps no exception. And if you think about all the things, I won't give it, I don't need to pile up examples here, okay? And here's a, I'll give one example. About 200 years ago, Dr. Lavoisier, French Academy of Sciences, didn't believe in meteorites. No meteorites, they're crazy peasants, no meteorites, all the crazy peasants. And there were no meteorites, and crazy, th and they, the museums actually took meteorite samples and threw them away because the French Academy told them to. It took a long time to accept meteorites and dinosaurs and all that because the French Academy was sitting in their things and they said there aren't any. He got his head chopped off in the French Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> He was rude to some one of the revolutionaries. <laughs> now, more recently, you think that was old past, but in 2011, several of our leading scientists proposed crop circles are made by human fakers using microwave ovens and GPS. <laughs> and you think this is a joke, but it was in the newspaper's cover of Physics World. Richard Taylor used to be at New South Wales, he's in Oregon. Mishu Kaku, supposed to be the great man, gets on Fox TV. And what they proposed was, People in England or all over the world were taking microwave ovens out of their kitchens, <laughs> disassembling them, taking the little part out, taking a very long extension cord or battery, I don't know. Some of you have to walk about an hour through the field to reach one from your nearest car park and going out in the middle of the night for a file and then we're using it. And of course, if you do this and put, you treat with the microwave, the crop just to set on fire, it's not possible. So this was the last entry of, <laughs> so that's just, just like the, the French guy. Now, this is more interesting. Topically, in a few months ago, the SETI people had a big meeting to decide, are we going to send a message out to the stars, let people know their life on Earth? Can we afford to let them know? And meanwhile, in Germany, here's Dr. Drake. Meanwhile, in Germany last week, here he is, this last year, this huge crop picture appeared near a radio telescope. <laughs> And all these German people, it was in the European news everywhere, all the radio telescopes, here's a crop picture. Now you'd think, oh, and the farmer said, oh, maybe it was some drunken students, you know? <laughs> and you think, and not only that, but here she is talking again, the head of SETI on October 27 last year in Virginia. We have to get money, there's no, no, no aliens out there, no aliens. And six different crop pictures have appeared near radio telescopes. This was in 2001. This shows a laser. They don't use radio telescopes, a lot of amplification. This was in 2002. I'll show that one again, Show Bolton. This was in Harwell, I think, 2013. This was in Germany. And this lovely one was in England last summer. So they're putting it right next to the radio telescopes all the time. And how you can keep ignoring this, I'm not sure how. So the question is, when I've been doing this for 10 years, why have so few mainstream scientists studied crop pictures? Are they less enlightened than great men of the past? And here are the great men of the past doing like I'm doing today, talking, you know. There's Descartes, Newton, and John Locke, who's my favorite. And here are our guys today. <laughs> they're sort of regimented more. You know, they're afraid to do anything. They've got their ties, their lab coats. Alternatively, maybe they are smart and they've got, I realized this morning, maybe it's cognitive dissonance. They're so strict in their academic belief they can't change. When people hold a core belief and they have different evidence, they just can't accept it. it. It upsets them too much. And I think there's a lot of truth to this. They're very smart, but they can't change their core belief system. They get very angry. You imagine how angry they get. Well, I'll show you some facts now. This is just an introduction to say, we're a scientist. What's going on here? Why can't they do it with me? I want a whole team with me. Strong evidence that many kinds of extraterrestrial spacecraft are currently visiting Earth. Now, do they just fly around in the sky or do they do other things as well? <laughs> and this is just a review. Leslie Keane, this is a famous review of the History Channel about all the UFO people in America telling about the Los Angeles UFO, which caused a, a shot at it. Oregon, the McMillan UFO, of a, the very famous one, a fleet of gray aliens over the White House in 1952, and the Belgian Triangle. Now, these are just reviews. I'll show you a few you haven't seen before because we need some new ones. I've seen a UFO close by myself. Uh, last summer, a mate of mine from Dural came and did, fixed my roof because it had some damage on the roof. So he said, I've got a UFO on my iPhone when I was practicing golf. And I said, my, he says, my wife says I need to go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, so let's have a look at it. I said, the camera doesn't need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> so let me have a look at it. He hadn't taken out his iPhone yet. So I downloaded it about a 660 KB file. And what was interesting about this one is there was a lot of detail. I have the original, the metadata, 
It was over the power lines. It was getting, it was had its antenna out to get power from Sydney Electricity. <laughs> and actually you can see a lot of detail here, not just a ring, and you see the two little red lights, and it had stuck its antenna down, like, ooh, well, let's recharge, and it's are sitting over there. So we're paying for that, it's getting free electricity from the Sydney network. <laughs> and the other, so this is actually our thought, and that's what he saw it. He wasn't just a camera, he saw it and then snapped a photo. So it looked just like that, it was no mystery. And now in England, you think the crop circles have nothing to do with UFOs, but they do. This is a famous 2013 crop picture near West Kennet Longbarrow, and it's a bit humorous, like many of them are. He's here triangular UFO like in Belgium, very detailed. And they, they're making it look like it's coming into land. <laughs> and West Kennet Longbarrow, I just noticed this. There it is landing right there, you see? Sometimes I notice that's where it's landing, the triangle on the runway. I didn't notice that until now. I get a bit lazy in my eyes. So they're not going to be much longer until they land. You see, there's the exhaust. Has everybody seen this before? Oh, Morris, uh, that looks very much like the Hunapu in the center. Of the yeah, room. it's a Mayan, Mayan symbols. And it's coming out of a wormhole. See, the craft comes out of a wormhole, flies down, and comes and lands on the runway. You know? So it's a very spe big, spectacular thing in 2013. And now, just in case the people don't know it, this is a famous crop picture from 2007 that Winston Keach and others did, I'll show you more later, the A.A. Anki crop picture. They got it, filmed it while it was being made. They had in four cameras on it. And then they went home and the next morning, the field was closed. The British military had closed the field. The reason was these orbs were flying over it. This is just like the one we saw. And there was a British military helicopter flying around finding it. And these are the same as the Foo Fighters in World War II. Now here's some close-ups of the orbs. Floating silver balls laid as Nazi weapons. Here's one from 2009 in the crop circles. And this was taken by a friend of mine right out of her camera. Nobody knows what it looks like. So now you're going to see a close-up of her crop circle of what you saw at a distance in the previous talk. And this is over Clay Hill, one of the cubes, in 2010. And I haven't photoshopped it. I could have sharpened it. I just took it out of her camera, a 6 meg base pick file, my friend S.A., who I won't say who it is, she, she snapped some photos, and she didn't really see it clearly by eye, but it was right, very clear right in the photo, a cricket ball shape. And you can blow it up and see the sun was shining on it. And there was, it's sitting right over a big crop picture. This is just the enlargement. I have the original. So it's absolutely, and this, there are dozens and dozens of photos of these over crop pictures. No one knows whether they're just looking at the crop picture or making them. Like, we don't know whether they're involved in making it or looking. But there, there, there are UFOs associated with crop pictures. This is a famous ball of light where a famous researcher, I won't mention CM, was sat and watched for 15 minutes under milk hill and oil, and it was right there with him for 15 minutes. He made a sketch of it, he didn't get a photo. And that was from 19, right under milk hill in 1999. So these phenomena are quite common. I just want to get onto the crop circles and not show any more. Now, do these visitors have space-time wormhole technology, which lets them travel across space-time or other dimensions. We're talking about it. This is what a wormhole, you know, you get here like Interstellar, the movie. Spaceship comes through here, goes one place to another. Well, that image there, you're just gonna see in the crop. Here, we can watch, whack. <laughs> this is the space fabric of space-time, you're going from one place to another. This was 2006, and I just want you, to show you how difficult it is, this is what it looks like with less perspective or a close-up. To show you, and there are a bunch of them. And that year, there were so many of them. This was, we'll stop on this one. This was the one you just saw. This is called a Roman ring used for time travel, where two different wormholes interact with one another. This is a Roman ring with four wormholes, with two of them active, where they go around, and they're all used for time travel. This is called a ring hole. We're, which is stabilized by topology. So you're looking at a very advanced time travel technology here. Does anybody want to look at that for a bit longer before I switch? Very advanced. These are not the only ones. There are dozens and dozens. These were just happened to be in 2006. There were so many of them that year. And you, no one could do this by hand. Not even one of them could do by hand. The perspective effects, you see, of all that. I've looking at, this was actually stereoscopic. Peter Sorensen found out. <laughs> Just you're gonna to have to get used to this. The crop circle artists have a sense of humor. <laughs> and where did, so when I find a crop circle like that, I go to see where do they draw it? Why do they choose that field? And sometimes you see, often you see something very informative. And this one, I just about fell off my chair, LOL. 
because there's a rabbit going down a wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> like Alice. So they saw the rabbit in the landscape. Believe it or not, this is what, how ridiculous it may seem to you. This is how it's done. And there's a little wormhole. They, they drew it right there in that field there. And there's a little rabbit coming across. <laughs> so you have to get that, that it isn't all fear and gloom. This is very common to see humor, of that cartoon humor in crop circles. And I've put Alice's. Everybody get that? So that's really their mentality. They're not, they're not, that's the mentality of these people, this cheerful, playful mentality. You see it, that's what you see, not this fear and gloom. And here's a bunch of, a bunch of them. This was 1995, 2006. A bunch of time travel things. These have a special meaning in the context of general relativity. It's called hyperbolic space time. Well, this one means if you have a hyperbolic cube, the clock is constant as you go around it. So the clock never moves. It's called S equals zero. The Einsteinian interval is zero. And there's lots of things. So evidently, you can just see already we're dealing with an advanced time travel, space travel civilization. Well, because they're just, they're just making these pictures all the time. They're not just flying around in ships. They can manipulate space and time like Doctor Who or whoever you think. It could be like in Fringe is a good example. And they have this technology. And that's what we're dealing with, people who can travel through space and time. And here's an example of the hyperbolic cube which was on top of Edgell Hampton Hill. Just look at the detail here. Look at how many lines there are. This was in 2006. I mean, look at that. I took some different views of it. That's on top of Edgell Hampton, not far from Devizes. Just incredible. Now, just to, before we go crazy, you think I'm not crazy. I just want to remember, how did I get into this in mainstream science? I started at Caltech and did the very famous, the first crystal structure of DNA at higher resolution. They call it the dickerson drew dodecahedron It has its own little name. And this beautiful thing I saw for the first time in 1980. And I saw it for the first time. Nobody else saw it. I had it in the room by myself. And a beautiful thing. And we also did something left-handed DNA. Right-handed or left-handed. I'm left-handed. And this was supposed to be impossible. Heresy like crop pictures. And then I had a full, full length nature paper in 1980 about left handed DNA. I was actually, someone else discovered the first version before me a couple of years. Something left handed, left handed. And then for my thesis work in Cambridge, England, famous lab there, we were working on the nucleosome core particle, which is how DNA wraps in chromosomes. And this is how it, you have to understand DNA like this. And there's some proteins in the middle, different colors, the DNA going around. And you'll see an example of that in crops. I was actually at a meeting in Cambridge, and they drew this in crops, as you'll see a little while later. And that's what convinced me that I said, there's nobody doing with this with ropes and boards after I saw that in crops. We'll come back to that in a minute. The nucleosome core. My, yeah, I discovered, I discovered two things about the nucleosome core. I discovered how many bases there are per turn when it wraps around, called 10.2, not 10, not 10.6. And also I discovered there's a code, a quantum mechanical code in the base, it's like a garden hose, like a garden hose only wraps one way, and the sequence of bases makes it like a garden hose, it has to wrap in a certain way, it can't go the other way. And if you, if you mathematically can, that's all proved like from, that's why the chromosome doesn't fall apart, when DNA in your chromosome knows what it's doing, you know. So this, there's a little mathematical code. And here's some examples of my DNA textbook, from various years, the molecule and how it works, just to show it's reputable. I like that one, that was a pretty picture with some other friends in Cambridge when I worked there. So it's all very reputable. I'm not making anything new age or anything, okay? This is just like, I don't know. Now, let's go quickly now into crop circles. We want to look at examples where some crop pictures appeared suddenly in broad daylight. These aren't the only examples. But there's some, we'll give three examples right away, which are quite famous. The first was at Stonehenge in 1996. Do you know about this already? It's 1996, late afternoon, guards, cars, nothing there, just guards didn't see anything. Suddenly within a space of about 15 to 30 minutes, this big spectacular thing appeared near Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a very busy place. The guards didn't see anybody. They would of course been worried to get there, protect the stones. Nobody saw anything. Two weeks later, or three weeks later, in your children, we learned what that crop picture meant in terms of phases of the moon. It's an alien symbols for astronomy. You use stones to measure the moon, and that's what they're talking about. This is the, the cycles of the moon in sort of an alien way, and they drew it again with a pointer to tell exactly what the lunar phase was on a certain day. So it was like a Rosetta Stone to help us, and they drew that like three weeks later. 
So that was interesting. They helped us interpret, otherwise we couldn't probably interpret the thing. Very, very complicated, as you can see. I'm not going to continue. Here's an, this is another famous one in Eastfield that Winston Keach photographed. And he sat on the hill with Gary and Paula on top of this place near Eastfield. And at 3.13, there was just the thing, anyone by, it was dark. The crop picture formed with no one there just very quickly. It was 300 meters long, rolling hills. And this is a very famous one. And my personal view of this, it's the Om symbol, the holy name of God. It also looks like Ea Enki, his symbol, the lunar crescent, the great Sumerian god. It's also a Sanskrit symbol. You see the Om symbol everywhere. And it's divided up again like their lunar phases. So this is very deep, you know. This is like very, very deep. This was on the date 777, July 7, 2007. And then another one in 2011, near the Sherrod Hill White Horse. This small one appeared in daylight between 10 and 11 or something, 10, 15. And these guys found it, some Norwegians. And it looks like that, which was an odd shape. And at that time, there was a big storm on Saturn. And it sort of looks, that's my interpretation. So what they'll do is they'll often draw astronomical phenomena in the field and things like that. So there's no possibility any of these could have been human made. I don't care what they say. It's all completely, of course, they're just a small subset. But that sort of gets you started, doesn't it? So we're going to start looking now at some interest, they're just interesting ones. Now, when you walk into a crop picture, how can you tell the difference between a real one and a human made one? If you go into a, a, a real one, you'll see these big thick celery stems are bent over like an iron bar that's been heated and cooled, like that. And that's in oilseed rape. That's in oilseed rape. This is in flax. They're just bent over. There's nothing broken. It's a man standing in front of them. If you go to a fake one, like this beauty here, <laughs> you'll see the thing's just been crushed everywhere. So it's, it's not a hard thing for that kind of crop to tell what a fake crop picture is. It looks ugly too, you know. And you'll compare them. Here's an oil seed rape, a real one. The wheat stem is bending around. The node's exploding, and this is a fake one. So, okay, it's pretty, it's not that hard, not that hard. Another characteristic, which is Paul Jacobs does, he looks at the crop picture, and from different points, if you're not there, and you see photos, something about the energy short circuits when it goes across a crop free region or a tram line. So the crop doesn't get flattened with this, this little space. It's like a, a wire that doesn't conduct. So if you look at tram lines, as our general rule, the crop is still standing on the tram line because the energy there just shorted out. It didn't push anything down. So you can see these various examples from various crop pictures. And I'll show you a close up. And this is from last summer, Paul Jacobs photo. And you can see the crops going here. There's a little tram line there with nothing but dirt. And this crop just didn't get forced down. So when you walk in there, you see, just, just sat there. The force wasn't enough to push it over. The force was finely tuned and it just didn't, nobody did that with a rope and a board. And here's another example. I colored it a bit more so you'd see it. Sometimes the crop's energy is tuned to do green versus brown wheat differently. So it might flatten the brown, but the green is a bit stronger and doesn't get flattened. And you see, that's what happened here. So the green wheat, just, green plants didn't get flattened. So there's really quite a lot of things here. Here's another one. Uh, though it's certain late in the year, the August, the seed heads will be curved and you can't break them. And it's like a woman combing her hair. They get heated and combed again, and they come just like combing the hair straight, just like you'll straighten your hair with a hot comb. Women do that, don't they? Straighten the hair with a hot comb. You see TV ads all the time. This was Charles Mallet who found that. But you see this commonly. This was last summer in Holland, a one formed in corn, and then three days later, like Jesus, it resurrected again. <laughs> so it came up again after three days. So, so none of these were made by, so a very large fraction not made by people with rope and boards. I just wanted to get through that, okay? Now, now you're going to see even more amazing things. I was in 2009, I was in uh, Averbury with my wife and Catherine, one of those hippies, and her friend, and there weren't any crop pictures. Then about 10 in the morning, there's a new one, you know, Silbury Hill, let's go. So I got there, and I saw this amazing thing. For, it just happened, like in daylight, apparently, with things everywhere. And there was just weaving everywhere you look. So I went around taking photos. My wife took that photo. There's Silbury Hill in the background. 
and there's weaving everywhere, and there was nothing there. I was just driven by the field about an hour earlier at this big thing here, the Stillbury Hill, the ancient monument. Now, I'll bring your attention to this one. This is shocking. I walked in the field. I said, what's that thing doing there? <laughs> of course, it was just, it's just a smiley face. <laughs> They're friendly. They're not abducting anybody. These, are, these aliens are friendly. <laughs> There's an intentional motif, okay? <laughs> I forgot it was in one of these. I can't remember which one. So there's not much interpretation is required. This is an authentic alien time traveler made thing. So you're not scared. You don't, they don't want you to be scared of it, okay? And here's some more amazing things. This was a 2000, just to show you how much there's weaving. Look how many weaves there are for this thing. I'll just show you some more weaving. This was last summer. There were basket weaves, which no one can do by hand. And here's one from 2009, a huge basket weave. Those are people. And look at the weaving. We haven't gotten to messages yet. We're just showing you. Um, and this was the famous basket, or another basket in 1999. Now this one happened on August 6th. It was late in the afternoon. The farmer didn't see it the same way. And he decided he had to cut it out as soon as possible, which is why we don't have too many photos. And Bert went over there, Bert Jensen, and this beautiful thing, and this farmer here, bless his soul, decided he had to cut it through with his tractor as soon as possible. <laughs> so it's hard, when you see something that beautiful, you think the farmer would give it a day or two, you know, just a few days, a little while. But no, he normally would harvest it, but he had to, no, there's nothing there, nothing there. So it's really hard this cognitive dissonance is really hard when you see something that beautiful. There's nothing you can do. They're just minds, you know, it's like that. And you see this a lot. Not everyone, but you see a lot of this, okay? Now, let's just, I know this is a bit tedious, but let's look at some real human-made ones that are known to be human, known to be human-made, and we'll see what they look like. The first one was the Doug and Day. They told you Doug and Dave made them all, and that's why the media put this in the world, and then they actually made one, and it was just crap. The whole story was just like crap. The media, like a weapons of mass destruction sort of media story, okay? Just a cover story. And here's National Geographic decided they would prove there were no real crop circles. So they hired some people to make this with this thing here. This big, it's pretty easy, just go around in a circle. This one's a little better by National Geographic. It's just straight lines and the plants are crushed. This is impressive at first sight. They did it in daylight, I mean. This is quite small in daylight. It's only about 30, 40 meters. So that is a National Geographic. And here's another National Geographic. The plants are crushed and it was done well, but you can see the radio board lines everywhere. Around it. We, obviously a board just went around everywhere, okay? And there was mud covering it. The people walked and said, just crushed and covered with mud everywhere. If you go to a real one, that even on a wet day, the plants are off the ground, there's no mud anywhere. You can just see someone's been stomping through the whole thing as soon as you walk in. It's often wet in England. And here's Stephen Fry decided he would get in and crush one <laughs> and crush it. And I'm just all I want to say about Stephen Fry is that QI is IQ spelled backwards. <laughs> That's my opinion on that. I was there for that. And then here, this was done in Australia by Julian Richardson last year. Beef is the answer, and this is quite nicely done. This is the state of the art, the best possible thing which can be done. Beef is the answer, advertising campaign last summer here in Australia. <coughs> which is nicely done, but it won't match. There's no, you know, it's probably the best that can be done. Okay. Now, typically, this is what a human-made crop picture looks like. Here's the dog. I think that's Sonia over there. I don't know who this is. It looks so bad. They, that, that's a question mark. It was a marriage proposal, and they destroy it before anybody can find it. It looks just terrible. So often they'll destroy their work. It looks just too bad. Paul gave me that photo. So the question is for National Geographic, the challenge, there's a crop circle challenge, and they said, look, you want to make one, prove people made it. Why don't you reproduce Milk Hill? This is known to be a known paranormal one, sitting on top of Milk Hill. Circles everywhere. Get your people out to do it. And of course, they always refuse. So if they ever, if everyone ever tells you oh, humans made it, why can't they do it? Their reason is they would they would just fail. Maybe they all night they would get through maybe a one arm. They would maybe just, they couldn't ever. That was done in four hours in a rainstorm, a driving rainstorm. One of the most famous crop pictures. Okay. <sighs> okay. Mariana said humans are so easily duped. 
Now, who are the circle makers? When you see the word circle maker, it's automatically your antenna should go up. British circle makers, and they MI5 advertised on their page for many years. This is legitimate. Want a career in the security services? Go to MI5, and these are the circle makers. British UK military intelligence, okay? And that's who they are. So when you see Circle Maker, that's the major one, okay? It's a fake website. They run, they run a whole bunch of fake websites. I know it's disturbing, but I have to show this. Uh, last summer, there was this beautiful crop picture in France, a short cathedral labyrinth, and everyone thought it was beautiful. And then about a week later, they put, someone posted this one photo and said, it's all fake. Well, here's the team made it. I looked at that and said, that looks Photoshopped. So I downloaded it, and some intel agency had actually posted cartoon figures Everywhere it looks like an insect eye. They aren't real. They aren't real. Just posted figures in, pasted it in, covered it up. You can see the thingy. And then just as a debunking thing. And the, the guy was so poor, he didn't change the metadata. <laughs> so you go to the end and if you save from PowerPoint, anybody does this, you know what the size of a, that's my PowerPoint slide. When you make a collage, it's just, it's just right out of PowerPoint. It's not a real photo. Real photos have totally different metadata than that. And they convinced everyone. People were ready to believe the lie. They were ready to believe it. One more, we're getting past one more debunking, then I'll get into positive things. Let's get on to National Geographic. <laughs> National Geographic is determined to prove the American people there are no crop circles. So in 2004, they went to an existing crop picture at night. Here's the reporter, put flat floodlights and had people walk through it with rope and ladders pretending they made it. Here are priests. They are out there walking through the existing one near West Kennet Long Bear pretending they made it, okay? And it's all just fake. The whole, it's all just fake. National Geographic. And the next day they made this one, paid some guy, and they told them all like that. And they had the circle maker, one of the MI5 guys, just stand up there associated with MI5 and hold the board. So this is National Geographic. So the cover up here goes fairly deep and extensive. It's a very extensive cover up, okay? So this is why the thing. Now let's get to the real phenomenon. I'm sorry I had to do that, but is everybody happy now that a lot of crop pictures are real? Raise your hands if you are. If you're not happy, you, you're welcome to tell me, okay? Because <laughs> it's a shock, it's a cognitive shock. Let's look at some real things. There have been many, several attempts made to communicate with everybody on Earth. One's a reply to the Arecibo radio transmission. There was a binary code. And three of the messages are, beware of the gray aliens. We oppose deception referring to the BBC in the UK. And no more war. And this was the Arecibo one. The Arecibo radio telescope. It points right at it. A big complicated thing. And what that was, was a copy of Carl Sagan's radio transmission from 1974. They took what Carl Sagan had sent out, and they made some changes. It's too complicated to go through it, but I know what these are. Let's list what all the changes are. Like, huge, huge thing. And then a few days later, what do we see? Another crop picture. And a face appears. Is it Carl Sagan's face? Who is it? And this was the original one, and that's, I think that's the crop picture he sent out. So I think it's Carl Sagan's face. Let's look at it more closely. Other people don't. I used to sit next to Carl Sagan in the Caltech lunchroom. It looked like him to me. Is that Carl Sagan? And you can see a lot of details there. Or maybe it's somebody else. So that's really quite a impressive looking thing. I mean, just nobody could possibly have done all that. So whether it's Carl Sagan or somebody else. Now this one, the gray alien, points right at the BBC transmitting tower. And there's a huge binary code here. And there's the gray aliens, sort of ugly looking fellow, and here's the code. And part of the code says, we oppose deception in binary code. And they're pointing right at the BBC Winchester transmitter. And here's the code, this huge disk. And completely authentic, I won't get into it, there's some people walking around, examining the first ground. And now I'm gonna let this slide stay up there for a second. This is the code. It's a big, long code, a big, long code. But where are the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises? The, we are the gray aliens. Much pain, but still time. Believe there is good out there. We oppose deception, conduit closing. Some of the capital letters, there's a secondary code, like I won't get into, which is why capital letters are capital or lowercase. This is, and it's huge. I mean, I don't, and these are called separator bits, which are half width, half normals, not zeros or ones. 
And the meaning of this is the, there's, the Graylians made a deal with the American government. The false gifts are the weapons they promised to defeat Russia in the Cold War. This was made by the other group of aliens who met Eisenhower, who, who they wouldn't take. The other group came and said, we're not giving you weapons. We'll give you energy. We'll give you medicine. But you can't have weapons because we just saw you blow an atomic bomb up on Japan. We're not giving you weapons. And the U.S. apparently, by all accounts, made a deal with the gray aliens because they promised them weapons, which are the false gifts. But then the weapons never came, the broken promises. They had a few stealth things, but they never came. The promises were broken. And what the grays needed was some slim with Eisenhower so they could abduct cattle, abduct people, do all these fearful things you're hearing about. They needed some sort of piece of paper from Eisenhower. You know, they did breaking interstellar law, I think. Anyway, so beware of these. This is the enemy race, the other race. They beware the greys. Much pain, but still time. Presumably that refers to us. I would think it'd be 2050 or less. Believe, pretty obviously, there's good out there. We oppose deception, which is the BBC. Conduit closing. And a conduit's that little wormhole we saw. They call a wormhole a conduit like a pipe. So there's no 100% this is an alien message or extraterrestrial message to mankind, and no one knows about it. And it strongly implicates the U.S. government in making a deal with the Greys. So they don't want to talk about that, you know? I mean, look at the thing. And that was done again overnight in a short time. You happy with that? Can I go on? You can't even. Now, this was more interesting. This was last year, about this time, June 6th. So we might see another one tonight. Um, uh, beautiful, near the D-Day celebrations, this beautiful thing. It looks messy because of those photos were taken. I didn't get the best photos. It's a simple Morse code for no more war. And these are like uranium atoms splitting. No more war. And another one at almost the same time showed a, a star extractor and a gun. He's going to be like a star extractor, remove the bullets from guns. And it happened on a date of 2-6, which is why he grouped them that way, May 26. So often the date of a crop picture is coded in the, mess, in the field. So that's why he made six of them went to two and six. So you often, as soon as you know what the date is, you look to see if it's coded in the, in the picture somehow. So this may, I don't know if you're Christian or not, but this is a very famous one. This is the face of Jesus crop picture. Very complicated. They, they did this history channel, showed the face of Jesus on the shroud. A few months later, this appeared, this big complicated thing. And it was on two different sides of the freeway. And the spot, you have to take this one and lift it up and flip it over to that one to get the image out, which I did with Max again last week. So it's a highly impressive thing. The lines curve, highly impressive. So whether they're Christian or they just like the face of Jesus, I don't know. The police wouldn't let anyone in there, you know. They wouldn't let the British people know about this. And all, here's the Celtic cross, which is again a Christian symbol on top of Edgel Hampton. Beautiful symbol. This is a rose window. I was there and the farmer cut it before I could get there, drive over. And again, it was August 12th in 12-fold rose window. Beautiful thing. Just detailed, every, just spectacular. With the sun shining, this is actually meant to show the sun is shining through the window. That's the image of the sun in the center and it's shining through, the, shining through a rose window. Just spectacular. Now, Let's get into some puzzles and intellectual content. They draw us a lot of puzzles. You're going to get confused when you see this. But the cognitive dissonance changes our behavior. It breaks us out of the old patterns. So you, get, you can't think the same way. That's what they're trying to get us to do. So there are two kinds of thinking. There's one way of thinking is associative. Like on Google, that's how they drew the crop picture. This is how we think. All lateral thinking. The other type is what academics do, like gears. These are the Maxwell equations, if you don't know, and that's the sh Schrodinger equation there. So this is what scientists do, which is why they can't fit into that. And these are all real crop circle puzzles, which I know. And I just did this as a quick summary diagram. These are eight different crop circle puzzles, and I've, that's melatonin. I've solved them all. They're all quite famous. And by learning to solve them, I think better. This one, they all take me a few weeks or months. And why would you do this? Well, when we study dolphins, what do we do? We put bubbles coming out. <laughs> the bubble, dolphin studies the bubbles. And here's a crop circle, and people go around seeing that. So when you're studying another species, it's really quite a logical thing to do. 
It's not crazy at all. You know, we don't hate the dolphins. Our, our side has put bubble generators. The Human Communication Project. And this is why people get upset when the UFO, not you people, but everyone else, a lot of people got upset at me, when you challenge what they hold closely, like the scientists. Their gears fall apart. <laughs> they have a certain narrow gear-like way of thinking, and that just goes. They don't have the associative thinking, and I'm sure this is why people get so angry at me. So now we hear some really interesting things. Molecular puzzles. This is the nanotube, the carbon nanotube, what means to fluorine in 2003. Quite interesting, isn't it? Trigonal carbon. I'm a chemist, so it's really easy for me to see these. Here's melatonin, which you take. It was the day of the Norway massacre. So they thought, oh, it's just crazy, you know? <laughs> when that guy shot those 80 people on the island of Norway, they drew this. And then you can tell from this how they do the chemistry, they, they draw the chemical symbols are slightly different from the way we draw them. This is how we draw them, but it's, it's melatonin. This is vitamin A, and this was in red poppies. Interestingly, the carotene in the red poppies is a dimer of vitamin A. So if you, that's why they have two here. You put two vitamin A's together and you get that red color. So this is like an ET biochemist studying our field. And again, you can see the chemical structure is quite interesting the way they draw it. This, is, this one is nice and like nice and wheat bran. It's in wheat. And the reason it's so fuzzy, the farmer cut it, we had to reconstruct it. This was done a nice and vitamin B3. So evidently the ET biochemists are studying our biochemistries. This is DNA from 1996. How you represent it? Very accurately, I won't get into it, but it's a very, someone knew what they were doing. And here's the, when I was in Cambridge studying this, giving a seminar on that, this one appeared <laughs> right nearby in the same field, you know. I was studying in Cambridge Engineering, giving a seminar on that thing, and this appears. And this is just spectacular, you know. Nucleus of how DNA curves in chromosomes. So a master did this. There was no, there's not even, there's like 1,296 square pixels. So the intellectual, you just get staggered by the intellectual. Now here's some geometrical puzzles. Now you're going to have to use your brain. That, if you fold it up, becomes this. <laughs> Can you do that? It's a bit, bit tricky. This one took me about a day to do. They drew a cube with a corner and six little broken things. What they're trying to tell us is, the corner of a cube has one-sixth the volume of the whole cube. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And here you can see a little orb that made it hopping along the field there, you see? I've seen that a few times. The orb is hopping like a rabbit. Hop, 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 hop. <laughs> right where the or little, orb, little orb made the thing. Well, looking at it. This, is, I was at this one in 2007, it's Metatron's cube. Just a beauty. The lines here to get that perspective are incredibly thin. They're only like that wide, and you can't even see from the ground and that's what it looks like from the air. This was another Metatron's cube in 2011. And here the weaving of the crop is just beautiful outside. We're just going through some pictorial examples. There's no thinking required. I just wanted to show you, if you haven't seen these before, what they show. Look at the weaving out here. There's actually a certain number I want. It's actually a lunar calendar, 354 days around the outside. And this is just a summary that 2007 and 2011, Metatron's cube. Metatron was an angel. Uh, Three-dimensional cube, four-dimensional cube, five-dimensional cube in projection. So they're teaching us about four and five dimensions. It's just staggering when you go to think about it. I haven't really told that many people. Now, okay, here's some, turn off your brain, you can just look now. Check this out. How do you make a cube appear to float in midair? <laughs> so this is pretty cool. This is this, that's the drawing there. And this is what it looks like from various aerial views. Now that's really a masterpiece. That's just a masterpiece of work. Oh, do I have some more time? I'm still going? Good, okay. I can come back to these. That's just a masterpiece. I mean, so that's just to open our brain a little bit. Here's another one. This was uh, Sean Randall, somebody walking over to see it on the ground. This is what it looks like on the ground. And from the air, 
think it's Steve Alexander's photo. Look what it looks It's Leonardo's cube. I didn't know what it was. And there was a Leonardo art exhibit here. So I went down to Town Hall and saw the Leonardo da Vinci art exhibit. I said, oh, it's Leonardo's cube. <laughs> it's again quite amazing, all the cross hatching and the perspective. You know, really, it's stunning. If you look at see what it looks like here versus there, uh, this was in Hackpin Hill, which is just north of Avery. Again, stunning. A big spectacular cube. There's even more spectacular. And you can see so much detail all around it. In 2012, three years ago. This was uh, near, Ava, near West Kennet Longbear in 2007. This one went, was world famous. It looks just like an uh, Egyptian tunnel or temple. And this is what it looks like on the ground. So you have to somehow do that on the ground to make it look like that from the air. It's just, uh, I would call that a work of artistic genius. Even if you know perspective, it's still a work of artistic genius, okay? I think that's Lucy Pringle's photo. Uh, this one I went to near Shoot Causeway. Now this one's a little tricky. You have to look light or dark and switch back and forth. Can you see both ways? Everybody can see both ways, light and dark. There was a lot of detail on the ground there as well. I went to that one. It's quite amazing. The farmers had, were initially against it, and then he had his little red-haired son out there collecting two pounds for everybody and telling me, I saw a bunch of UFOs in the field last night. <laughs> And you can see the serpent had a, the serpent points at it. You see the little tree serpents? The landscape points right at it. This is a very famous one. Pi to 10 digits made worldwide news. Uh, it was on this picture, it was on the web for a week. And nobody knew what it meant. I was working, it was raining that day, so I was sitting at my desk, didn't play golf. And Linda Howe sent me a message and said, somebody in North Carolina says they've solved it. Can you take a look at it? And I did. It was Mike Reed who's passed away. And he told me what it meant. I was staggered. I was the only second person to know. And then it went worldwide. And uh, it's a rotary encoder for Pi. So this was a British, a British newspaper did that. The angle you go around, so you start in the center, 3.1415. Six, five, four. If you haven't seen that before, that's just, and people said it's simple, but no one on earth knew, had done that before. Brand new mathematics. So really that's staggering as well. Uh, this is maybe over your head, but it's a binary code. I went to walk my dog, and by the time I came back, someone else had solved it. <laughs> it <was the> <laughs> newspaper. <laughs> and it shows what's called Euler's identity. I had the notes right there. It's a, next to a windmill, because it, it rotates like a windmill. It's an ASCII code for a mathematical called Euler's identity, which is called the most beautiful equation. E to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. And there's the equation. And you read the dots 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, like that, all the way around a little wheel. That looks like the windmill right behind it. I guess, uh, this was a few weeks later, the, and under a big heart, because they love us, the golden ratio to 10 digits. Do you know what a golden ratio is? One point, I didn't know now, 1.618-0399, and the length of each ray, and this big thing tells each a number. Are you stunned yet? Have you seen this before? I'm stunned every time, even though I know about it, the intellectual scope of it. I saw this one, it's not on the web yet, so you'll see something that no one else sees. They drew this crop picture four times, the farmer keeps cutting out, so I said four times, I, I better figure out what it means. And finally I realized it's just our solar system in a schematic drawing. There's our rings from our solar system over there, drawn schematically, and you get a pretty good match to what it looks like every time. It's just a, a just schematic way of looking at it. Abstract. You have to think in a different way. Now, who's making all these things? What well, we were shocked, in Italy in 2010, this spectacular thing appeared. And this code will shock you. This thing in Italy in a farmer's field, there's a reason it went on the green and the brown. It meant to symbolize eclipse. It then done that, the green and the brown, eclipse of the moon or the path, something. And then people wonder what it meant, it's all these dots. And it turns out if you count the number of dots here versus there, you get a number, six, nine, five, zero, and so on. 
And if you look up all the numbers and go to De Askimo, called De decimal ASCII, it says E equals MC squared. <laughs> I didn't actually do that. Somebody else did that before me, okay? And, here, and not only that, but they represent real stars. This is in Gemini where the sun was currently eclipsing, and these stars are, the, are real, real stars. So someone went to a star map and chose real stars for all the positions of the sun and drew them out there. So really, and so gosh, who did this? You're thinking, who did this? Well, we learned the next year in almost the same field, we saw this one. I just arrived in London from Hong Kong. My wife was sleeping. I was at a Paddington having some coffee, waiting for to get in the hotel about 2 p.m. And this appeared. I did this literally on the back of a napkin. <laughs> I said, I was scrolling and I said, I can't wait. I've got to do this. And I noticed there are eight of each thing. There's an eight binary code, like computer code, on the end of each one. And I worked out, it says, E-A-E-N-K-I space. A Anki space. I said, A Anki, he's the famous Sumerian god. And I said to the space, what does that mean? Does it mean space in the square or up there? So I talked to the black girl circle. I said, what do you think it means? It means up there. <laughs> space, he's up in space. A Anki up in space. This is just stunning. I'll come back to that. And these are called the stars of Aya. Which he's a, the stars of Aya were ancient, was an ancient Sumerian thing. Okay, and then interestingly, in 2013, we had another Sumerian one. This Sumerian boat of heaven. The boat of heaven is a spaceship, ship space. Boat of heaven means ship space in Sumeria. It's the same. We could, we could call our spaceships boats of heaven. We call them spaceships, and they drew it near Silbury Hill. It was actually coded if you. The, something I won't get into the coding. And it was a match to the visiting Enki statue at Chatswood near here. So I looked at that and I said, haven't I seen that statue somewhere? So I went over and snapped some photos at the Chatswood in the concourse. And there's a statue there called Visiting Enki. What? Did you actually call that statue yes. Visiting Enki? And I went through it. Uh, Inanna visits Enki, the Lord of Wisdom, to get the keys to knowledge to improve, improve her civilization. It's in the, I went to the Vivid. I was at Vivid at Chatsworth two nights ago. So what's that doing in Chatsworth? In uh, just a decorative, a decorative symbol. I would guess this copper already saw it before. I guess he. I guess he saw it. If it's, if it's Enki and he saw a visiting Enki statue, he might copy it. Gives you an idea of how much they're looking at us, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess visiting Enki on the web, you could see it, and he looked up his name Enki, Enki on the web, the Lord of Wisdom, still alive. 10,000 years, Sumerian god, and draws a crop picture. So I was a bit stunned by that, okay? This was, whether it's an accident or, do you see the boat sailing? So really, anyway, you can see it from the air. I mean, the visiting Enki, there are not many Enki statues in the world. But if you go to Chatsworth, you'll see. That was a 2013. Now you go, really, how's everybody's heads doing? Have they exploded yet? Okay, we're, there you are now, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, sometimes crop pictures make thousands of symbols. I don't know what these mean. I know what this end of it means. I don't know what that side means. This is some planetary stuff. I won't get into it. And uh, I figured this out. I can't remember right now. But look at all these symbols. It's serpents, Mayan pyramids. Just going, and this was uh, under Milk Hill. Julian took those photos, and, and, and here's what it looks like from the ground. There's the Milk Hill White Horse back there. There's Milk Hill back there. And look at all these symbols. Just, and there's in the middle of crop, no one walked there. There's a serpent, a Mayan spiral. You're just stunned. I mean, I, I'm stunned. Thousands of symbols. You can't get them all in one photo. Stuart took those with his pole camera. He just goes, it's about a kilometer long. And that, that year, not only was the that was the one you're looking at over here, there were two of them in the same time. One was in south, not too far from one another. This was in Southfield, this big long bird. You can see Mayan 13 at the end, this little symbol. And there's this, this huge thing here with Mayan pyramids. So that's a sextant. If you wonder what this is, that's an astronomical sextant. And the man is sitting with a sextant, and he's looking at the planets as they rotate around. That's the symbolism. And these little boxes tell you how high each planet is and where they move. I, I figured this out at some point. I can't remember. So that's actually like looking with a sextant, like a sailor looking at the sky. So this should really be, I mean, it's 100%. These aren't made by people, but no one, I, I don't know what these mean. 
Okay, <laughs> alien script. Let's go to some light ones. This is the famous jellyfish. Alien jellyfish image, giant jellyfish. Ha ha. This is uh, the swallows, which you saw originally. This bird has a damaged wing here. And there's a code in that, there was a code in that, but I won't get into it. Just huge thing. And this was the phoenix, a very famous, the, the phoenix rising from the ashes, like Betty Luca said. When Betty Luca was taken in an abduction in 1967, the famous Andreasen affair, she was shown a phoenix, and she said, that's the fate of mankind, to die in fire and to be reborn. And they showed the thing in crops. And you see there's a phoenix bird here, dying in fire, its tail being burned, and the eggs will rehatch again. And they had this huge feature in the middle, and all this stuff here. So, I mean, you have to wonder if that's not our, our fate, okay? And now, we'll go to some science. If we have time, we st how are we doing? Okay. Not only do they show us nice pictures, but they show us science. Now, you would think my scientific colleagues would pay attention if a race that can fly around through space with UFOs, the orbs flying, gravity control, you make this stuff. We don't know how they do it, like magic, like we would show a mobile phone to a Roman. You would think that they would pay attention to this, and like I'm doing, but they won't. So I'll show you some hints of advanced science. This is just what they show us. They must have more. Hints of advanced science they show in crops. A visitor from NASA was, went there and got, stood in the field and asked verbally a couple of days before, can you provide me some research, direction for research into spacecraft propulsion? And he was stunned. Two days later, this big thing appeared and told him, mate, mate you got to use magnetism. <laughs> it's a magnetic field. But not exactly the way we draw a magnetic field. It looks different. So the, the field lines are different than the way we draw it. I won't get into it, but uh, it's their understanding of magnetism isn't like ours. Ma magnetism is how you fly the spacecraft propulsion. They told him directly. And he worked for NASA, you know? And here's one July 22nd, that, that magnet, the magnetic field. And they drew it from the other end, the other perspective, looking down the magnet a few days later, as it would burr, I think. So that's what a magnetic field looks like. And in 2009, this is a real magnetic field used called ferrofluid, not iron thing. That's what a magnetic field really looks like. And all of these crop pictures show magnetic fields. And we didn't get that on Earth until 2009. It's not in any textbook. It's been done. It's published, but they don't teach it. So do you think they knew more about magnetism than we did? <laughs> so, so they've been showing us all along. Finally, I said, oh, now I know what you're talking about. And this is actually a real, there's this guy's hand, there's the magnetic field. They drew this next to an electricity pylon saying you can make electricity that way. And these are what a magnetic field really looks like as it's imaged. So they're trying to teach us about magnetism, but we're not paying any attention, which is a bit frustrating. So that isn't what they teach in school, okay? Now you see some more amazing things. This was actually, uh, this is called the Lorentz law for magnetism. The Lorentz force law, the right hand rule. The magnetic field will twist something around like that as they drew that. The magnetic field goes that way. The electron moving through. If an electron goes over a magnet, it, it curves. And that's what they showed. And there's a, there's a little wormhole next to it. This is just showing the basic. This is 1995. And this was a famous, like a Searle magnetic motor they drew near Ava Berry, completely authentic. The little rotors, and there's a pi symbol saying, go around in a circle. <laughs> Putting pi there means go around in a circle, okay? Called the Searle's effect, but so there must be something in the Searle effect generator, which we don't understand where they drew a picture of it. Now this one, a uh, fellow Jack Sullivan visited Eastfield and he parked his car where I know it was, where you park in Eastfield. He came back and there were there, someone had broken in, there were marks on the windshield. And he had he photographed it. He, the glass had been marked. And the later this thing appeared, it's called a magnetic flux tube. And while he was gone to visit the crop picture, someone had gone into his, through the glass, fiddled around, demagnetized the whole inside of his car, looked to see what a human car looks like, and went back out again, just to check out what human technology is like. They visited his thing while he was parked there. That was Jack, you know? So he took, so he wrote about that. The magnet was demagnetized, the whole car, they thought someone had broken in, but the doors were locked, and then he saw this on the glass. And they drew it in the field. So that's just astonishing. I mean, you know, he was parked there right there. Must have been quite a small creature. 
Now for the UFO people, this is a famous UFO case in Nebraska. The policeman, what was his name? Herbert Shermer, met the UFO, invited on board after he put his guns away. They, tried to t they told him it works by reversible electromagnetism. And he made a sketch of all the little magnets around the outside of what a propulsion system looks like. Of course, he's just a policeman, didn't know. And they draw the crops, the same thing. Here's a big UFO, a number of them, and here's the propulsion system. So there's no doubt that UFO, that's how the UFOs are flying. If you want to wonder how they're flying, they have a, they use magnetic technologies which we don't study. And the, you, as I said, I've tried to get people to do it here. They just, they're just like that. They won't do it, okay? Now, you're worried about the greenhouse effect and electricity and burning coal or whatever. They showed low energy nuclear fusion in 2013. How to do it? How can we make electricity without burning coal? And they show this spectacular diagram in Italy. And there's a little computer code on the side. D -S -K -S -D -H -K is the way you read it. Sulfur, deuterium, hydrogen, potassium. And over here you see some little protons and neutrons like triplets coming out. See that little mark there. And what that means is that's a fusion reaction. That's the code. That's to identify the elements. Hydrogen. And what happens is there's a sulfur 32 nucleus, 32 little symbols. A hydrogen goes in here like a fertilizing egg. A deuterium goes in there. Maybe the angles are important. And the energy comes out the other side. And the potassium, it turns out, has very short-lived isotopes. So even if this reactor blew up, the half-life would be a minute of radioactivity. It wouldn't last very long. So we can make power the whole Earth doing that, probably. If we figured it out, well, energy nuclear fusion, sulfur, hydrogen, deuterium, potassium, power the whole earth, and there's no fall off. So they've given this to us, and I can't get anybody to work on it. You th that's a bit frustrating, isn't it? Yes. I found that it was so explicit of a message. <laughs> so maybe you have to have a beam. Maybe it has to come at a certain angle, but whatever. It's a fairly explicit message. You put these three elements together. No one's tried it. And if you look at the, all three of them in context, in 2010, near one another, you had E equals MC squared. And then here you have the Aya Enki telling us who's doing it, Sumerian God. And then the next one was the telling us how to make energy, sulfur, potassium. And if you notice, a six-pointed star, a seven-pointed star, then an eight-pointed star. So they're all made by the same person. It's in co context. And actually, I'll show you something if you study crop pictures. Around here you see three stars, three stars for the word Aya. Four stars, four stars, four stars, four stars for the word Enki. Then five stars for space. These are the third and fourth and fifth words of continuation. Because this was E word one, MC squared word two, A or word three, Enki word four, space word five. One, two, three, four, five. So they do that. They show that continuation so everyone knows that it's authentic. There's a logical continuation among all these, whatever the intelligence agencies say. So there's a way to power the whole earth, and no one, I've talked to people, no one wants to work on it. Now, do you think they're looking at what we're doing? Three Nobel Prizes for Physics or Chemistry were drawn in crops. Now we're getting to time travel. I promise you we get to time travel. Before we talk about predicting things, three Nobel Prizes, are, the Nobel Prize is given each year in October. So if you draw it beforehand in August, then you know about it beforehand, don't you? You know what happens in October. That's happened three times. The first time, they give a Nobel Prize in physics for the CCE chip, which is in your cameras. There's the little CCE chip. The farmer wouldn't let me in the field. There's the CCD chip, and they drew this in crops three months beforehand, in August. I was there, and the farmer was very aggressive, wouldn't let anybody in the field. It's very detailed, okay? So they drew the Nobel Prize three months before it happened. So already, we're looking at time travel here. We're looking at, there's no way around it. Let's see if it happens again. Happen the next year. Graphene for solar cells, which is a new technology. You know, put a little electric, better than copper. So, solar cells, graphene, they're trying to make this. They draw that in crops and spectacular thing, June 25. And then the Nobel Prize three months later, October 5. So they knew about it beforehand. And I like this one because I'm a, I did crystals. The quasi crystal. And this is what a quasi-crystal diffraction pattern looks like, a five-dimensional cube. That's what a five-dimensional cube looks like in projection. And this is the crop picture they drew. And this was on August 15, and that was on October 5. 
Interestingly, I was there in July 15. I was on top of the hill across the road, and I thought I saw the shadow of a crop picture right where that one was. And I raced across the road, and nothing was there. It was like a mirage. So whether I was imagining things or there was something, I, I don't know. I was sure there was one there, and I got there. It was just empty. I saw forward in time. And here's another one. This was the diffraction pattern on the Nobel Prize three months later, and I put an overlay so you could see it. And this is what waves of diffraction look like, and you can see the waves in the crop. So now we saw, now I've given you a good introduction to time travel. They knew about three Nobel Prizes before they happened. So we're already, we've got time travel. Time travel's right in there, okay? So we look for more examples. Cryptic images of the future. I first noticed this in 2007 when Comet Holmes exploded, and I found out they'd drawn what's called the perihelion diagram for Comet Holmes two years earlier. And it's very descriptive, you know, it tells when Comet Holmes is close to the sun. And here's the exact diagram for Comet Holmes they'd drawn it two years earlier. So they knew there's a the comet flying that way. They knew two years before this comet would explode. Of course, an astronomical event you might won't change, a human event might change depending on what people do, but the comets, nobody's interfering with the comet. And there was actually a code that year. This was the comet exploding among the stars drawn nearby. And you see what the real thing was two years later. And there was a binary code in there, and I actually I solved that code. And one of the little codes tells you the date of the formation, and the other told you <coughs> another date, and two, thousand, two years later, and that was the very day something very important happened with this comet. So I got that one right about three months before I posted that and got that exactly right. But it took a lot of thinking. He used a Mayan calendar. It took me a lot of thinking to get that. So there's no doubt they knew about that. Here's just some pictures. This is comet I sun shown beforehand. And you might say it's any comet, but look at this. It's quite a good match. They used a pond to get the match. This was quite clever, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this was 2013. A star exploded, a stellar nova. They drew that one day before the light reached Earth. And this happened the next day. This was, there was another one I'll get to. It. This is skipping, okay? So this time travel started to capture my attention because of these examples. I'm not making it up. You see over and over again, you start to thinking. Uh, this one caused panic because in 1995, there was a picture of the solar system with Earth, myth Earth, Earth missing. And someone said, oh, Earth's going to crack up. It wasn't. It was just a code. Where Earth was missing was where the comet would blow up in three months. So in June 24, Earth was here. And three months later, the comet would explode in the same place in space. It's just a code. The Earth wasn't going to blow up. So you see the comet blowing up. So I've got all these examples of time travel. So I was beginning to think, well, it must be time travel, you know? You can study them, and there are like dozens and dozens of examples. Does it have to be time travel, or can it not just be the fact that we subscribe to linear time, and in the space-time, yeah. in space-time, it's continuous? That's right. They can live differently where they see all everything at once. Exactly. I'm not saying they're traveling in time, but they have a different conception of time than we do. They can, they can see everything at once somehow. Somehow they get like the observers and fringe. Yeah. If you watch who watches fringe the TV show? The observers can see everything at once. So that's what they're like. Maybe they're like the observers, you know. Exactly. I'm just saying time travel because people it's easier for people to think about. There's a lot here. Now, some human images. This was the Gulf oil spill, and this is what they drew in crops three years before. And then nearby, they drew the BP. I went to this one, the BP logo. And I walked through it and I said, I said, it looks very authentic to me at Martin Cell. And I said, well, did somebody hire BP to make their logo out in the field? I said, what's happening? And I, it was because three years later, BP was going to be responsible for the Gulf oil spill. That's pretty cool, wasn't it? It's very authentic, this one. I walked through it. I thought it was a company thing at first. <laughs> this was just a hurricane they drew, flying, hurricane cruising along. Uh, this was the, new, the Fukushima one. This is interesting because they sh nuclear power, and that little thing there is the inset, is the inset. They drip twice. That little red thing's inside. And they, here's, this will take your breath away. Where do they draw it? When you ever see a crop picture, what did he draw in that field? And you can see there's something that looks quite like Japan in the landscape right nearby. I wouldn't say it's proof, but it's very suggestive. Very suggestive image, okay? And here's a fission reaction of different kinds of things they drew at the same time, fission, fusion. And they had a, there's a power station in Britain, and they drew it pointing at the power station. And this was in July 18, and Fukushima exploded like nine months later. 
<laughs> Time travel, you're getting, see there's a lot of examples on me too. So, oh, I better start paying attention to this. Uh, this, was, this was quite difficult. This was an atomic bomb lunar clock. Each little part of it is an atomic bomb, and there was a code. I won't show you the code, but it was, there's just details everywhere. And I figured it out, and I figured it out beforehand, in March or April, there was going to be a nuclear incident, but I thought it might be a bomb or a rod or something. But it turned out it was the Fukushima thing. So this was the timing circle they did at Windmill Hill for when the uh, Fukushima would explode. And the little atomic bomb. Quite impressive. There's no way you can do this without studying it for like hours and hours, okay? <laughs> it's not easy, but eventually I studied hours and hours and hours. You can see why I'm being a scientist, okay? Now, this, now we'll get into the more interesting things. We're covering a lot here. The MH17, now it's a bit graphic. You don't want to think, oh, this terrible accident. But I won't tell you what happened last summer. I'll just show you one because I don't want to be negative. Last July 16, we're doing the crop pictures and they told me, there's a new crop picture at Marlboro. I said, what is it? Let me see it. And I didn't know what it was about, but it looked like the Reuters news symbol. And I counted the number of little rings and it went 13, 14, 15, 15, 15, 16, 16, 16. And this is on July 16. So I said to my friends in England, let me just wait, tomorrow's July 17. Let's see what 17, it, obviously they're talking about 17 here. It's going into the center. The next morning I woke up and people posted on my page, there's a bloody airplane tail in the cornfield in Ukraine and it's named MH17 on July 17. And I went, oh no. <laughs> that was enough to sort of freak me, even, even me out. You know, the, the, the explicitness of it was enough to like shock me. So I realized the next day I was a bit in shock, and here's just a detail showing how detailed the image was. Little things everywhere. There's the Reuters news symbol that wrote the story and how detailed it was. The tail of the thing sitting there. 1717. But I, I couldn't have known beforehand it was an airplane. There were a few others, I might have guessed, but I don't. It was very cryptic. So in retrospect, you can say, oh, that's what it was about before. You think, oh, something's going to happen, but you, you can't really, there's no logical way to figure it out. Everybody, how's everybody doing? Okay, there's a lot of material here, okay. It's a lot here, that's why I thought it'd be too much. Now, oh, we're up to the new ones. Let's look at, let's forget everything in the past, and it's what's happening now, okay? This is another sad one. There are lotus flowers for the Chinese ferry disaster. The first thing that was, in Macmillan Way on April 19, this very delicate lotus flower appeared, and the crop wasn't even pressed down, so I had to put an outline of the stuff around it. It took me a little while, an outline of where all the crop was. It actually said five, four to five twenty-nine. It's like a, I won't get into it. And it's a very delicate flower. I didn't, I didn't know what it was about. Okay. And then in Beijing, this controversial crop picture appeared on May eighth. Now the farmer, right in the middle of Beijing. So I asked my friend John. I said, John, call the man up and ask him what's happening because he said fifty farmers did it to increase sunflower production. <laughs> I said, this, I said, can you have any evidence that the 50 farmers were there? To, do you have any photo? 50 farmer, there should be a photo of one of those 50 farmers, shouldn't there? There's no picture. Where are the 50 farmer? <laughs> so I called him and he could talk in Chinese. And so I thought it was bullshit after a while. I said, it had to be a real crop picture. But it was very odd. And only last night I figured out the code. It's a lotus flower because the crop artist is sad. It loses a petal. He's crying. The crop, lotus flower is crying for the Chinese people. And you can see there's a little section missing here. And the way they tell you to number it, how do you number it? And they used a five, twice they've done this, so I knew a five, twelve, thirteen triangle, a special thing in mathematics. So you know that's twelve and that's thirteen, and then you just count around everywhere. That's one. You see the telephone pole for one next to it. So now I know how to count. And six is missing and gone out there. The petals dropped off. Now you think that's the way we confirm that is. It looks just like another crop picture in England done six years before. So there's the one in England six years before, there's the one in Beijing. So they're telling us the number six for June, six. So I said, well, I've got that, that sort of very subtle, that's how they do it, you know, I've done mathematics. And in the center, because they're feeling sorry, they, just to show you it wasn't human made, there's a little image of the Buddha inside the lotus flower. And there were probably a better photo, but this is all I could get from the photos they had. It was sort of tromped on by then. You can see the Buddha on the right there. And this is very common showing the Buddha inside a lotus flower because the crop artist is crying for the Chinese people. He's crying for the Chinese people. It's a sad thing. So no human did this, you know, because the Buddha's right. They couldn't draw the Buddha. And when you look at it, we see where it was. 
It was drawn right here in the middle of Fangshang District, and this looks like a boat. And I didn't realize it looks like the Eastern Star Ferry until after it happened. But it looks a lot like the Eastern Star Ferry. And I said, oh no, you know, there's the uh, little pole out front. So they chose a particular field to do it in. I mean, it was, it's just an accident, but they chose a, specific, a field that looks like the subject they're doing. And now when you look at a bigger scale, there's some big numbers on the side. There's the ferry with the crop circle. And if we flip it over, we see 1711 and four more. This is what real crop codes are. 1711, it sailed on the 28th, 17 plus 11. Four days later, it turned over. It's shocking, isn't it? So I thought there had to be time travel. No one could do this by time travel. The boat turns over on the 28 plus four. Just shocking, you know? I mean, I was sort of the literal in this up. But that was, that, that was how, this is how crop circles are done. They're incredibly smart. And then when you looked here, you could see the date, 601 nearby in retrospect. It was drawn right there. And it was, that was 601 was when the boat went down. So, so that's a bit shocking, but he's crying for the Chinese people. This was the one in Holland. They drew it in Holland. This is Robert, who some people don't believe. They drew a simple little crop picture in Holland. And when you do go to Google Earth, you don't just look anywhere. The crop picture will point at something. It's an oval. So you see what it points at. And you see it pointing, and there's an arrow. So it's pointing at this. And there was a volcano in Chile almost the same time. I don't know if this predicted anything. And so there it is. It was on 519 was the date. And it was drawn next to bush 5, and there are 19 bushes in total. So the date is coded in the location, even though it's a very simple picture. That's why Robert didn't make it. And there's a little arrow, volcano picture this way. And this is what it actually what it looks like. Quite delicate, simple but delicate. And if you look at it, it looks like the image of the volcano in Chile. That's the volcano in Chile. I don't know if this predicted it, but sort of described it, okay? And this isn't something you could do by hand, that's sort of like diagram. Now the Japan, uh, Mariana wanted me to get to this, because I knew beforehand, this is one of the rare cases when I knew exactly something a date was going to happen, and I knew exactly on a certain time and date something was going to happen geological. And I wasn't sure what, but I can show you how I figured it out. They used the same little triangle they used in Beijing. And here's, there were two crop pictures, there were actually three or four. I'll show you the one in Holland. First of all, the one in Holland showed this diagram. You can see it. it's really fascinating. Now, they, some people say they're all fakes. This doesn't look like a fake to me. It's a, it's a diagram of a mercury going around the sun. And there's a little mercury. And I've sort of sketched out. It didn't take me long to figure this out. So mercury goes around the sun. Why are they drawing that? And here's, what it, here's if you draw it out what they're drawing. So on May 29 to 30, mercury would be here. It was here on the date the crop picture was made. It would travel around and get to here, which is called inferior conjunction. For Mercury, and it's the same size for Mercury and everything like that. So they're telling us that's the date, and this actually pointed toward an earthquake symbol on the landscape, which I haven't shown. So you go to Google Earth, you'll see this points right at like an earthquake symbol or a volcano symbol or something geological. I just can't show, I mean, there's so many slides. And if you wonder if this was a fake, look at this. This was one end of it. <laughs> it's just a single. The energy wasn't tuned to flatten mustard seeds. <laughs> <laughs> so, so because that wasn't grass, it was a mustard seed, it didn't get flattened. The faith of a mustard seed will go a long way. And this is quite typical. So that a single plant would just be standing. I just showed you that he wasn't just going out with a board and doing it, okay? Now the other one was more interesting. We just showed a triangle in Beijing. This may go over your head. I get, this is very difficult. This was in 2012, they drew what's called a polar clock right here. I went to it and it had an extra telephone pole. This time they have four telephone poles, one, two, three, four, and they drew it right here. And I said, this must be people. I didn't see all, all those little white spots. Must be people. And uh, four telephone poles, another polar clock. What are they trying to tell me? Finally, I figured out it's a triangle. I looked at Google Earth and said, the bloody thing is a triangle. They drew, what does that mean geometrically, having a circle next to a triangle? So I had to learn geometry. I didn't really know what, what does this mean, you know? It's a five, it's, it's a special triangle. What is this trying to tell us? And if you look closely at it again, it pointed to a telephone pole. That was actually three. And each of these actually, if you wonder what the numbers are, there were little drawings, like I think that's zero. There were little drawings in each thing telling with, with numbers on them. Those little flattened things had numbers, so you could tell which number was what. There are 13 of them. And it points to a telephone pole. And on May 30, the planets in the sky formed a triangle just like it. 
So it took me a while to figure this out. You know, this is like a Sudoku puzzle. So I didn't do this all at once, it took, you know. And it's the same date as in Holland. You see the planets arranged like that, Mars, Sun, Mercury. And it looks just like the triangle where they drew it on May 30. So let me have a summary slot of the mathematics. This is just a summary because I got confused, you know, a lot, quite a lot here. But it shows you how important it is. Four telephone poles to find the same triangle as used in Beijing on May 8. It's called a five, you have what's called a three, four, five triangle. Do you know geometry? Who's the teacher? Lachlan. Three, four, five triangle. This is the next one, a five, twelve, thirteen triangle. Do you know what that is? So five squared plus twelve squared equals thirteen squared. Called a special triangle, 25 plus 144, 169. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? You know? And the circle's sitting right there. And point number three points down at the middle of that. And actually, our 13, if you can't, points that way. The 13 of them, two, one, anyway. So it all lines up. Anyway, you can figure out that they've drawn some hours on the clock. And the hours read 2, 5, 9, and 12. And there's no doubt about that. And this was on May 24th. So I said 524, 529, 12. I said it must mean, like in Holland, it must mean 529, 12. It must be 529, 12, something. Jacob Holland just showed me May 29 or May 30. So 529, 12 is right in the middle of that. And there were a few others. So I, it wasn't that, once you figure that out, it was very straightforward, okay? So what happened then? <laughs> and it showed geological things. This actually pointed to, I'll show you in a second. On that day, at that time, 529-12, the volcano exploded in Japan, Mount Shindaki, with about an hour or two earlier. But this was, a, I showed you one from 12. So did it, was it trying to tell us about a volcano? So if we go to Google Earth and look to see where it was drawn, it was drawn next to the, sort of, it was drawn with the white arrow points next to the image a volcano. <laughs> so that's pretty, pretty amazing, isn't it? So what you have to do, let me slow down a bit, because even my brain, so what you have to do, you have to look for codes, you have to look to see where they drew it. It's sort of like a puzzle. You have to put all the pieces together. So you can't just look at the crop picture there. You have to see, did they put it here? Did they put it here? And there's, inform there's information, all those little things. So this is how I do it. It's not, it's not magic, it's just science. Anyone could do it, but, you, but it takes study, and it often isn't easy. There's some other images as well. Often you see things. Anyway, if you read it, it's oriented just like that in the field. Five, two, a tower is oriented, sitting up 5, 2, 9, 12, and it points to the volcano, which is what we just saw here, 5, 2, 9, 12. So I don't think there's any doubt that on May 24, they knew this was a week before they knew it was going to happen. I think it's very firm, rigorous evidence, you know. So there's no doubt about that one. There's also more data I haven't shown you, but I... Uh, So that's actually quite a good prediction. I got that one. I told Bill and Mary, I told you before, I said I wasn't sure whether it was an earthquake, a volcano, but I said some geological. I told everybody, I said, I knew I'd solve this one. Okay, so I wasn't keeping it secret, okay? It's on Facebook and all that. Uh, now let's do something easier. Let's just finish with something easy and light. Mercury came around to the sun, and they drew this beautiful picture of Mercury. Uh, two days ago at Fox, three days ago at Fox Ground Down, this beautiful picture, it's just aesthetically very pleasing. A cross symbol for sun, the solar cross, and there they have a little tree symbolizing, earth. there's some other things, earth, cream, earth, and sun, to finish with something easy. And here's what it was. On May 24th, the 529 Mercury was over there, but on May 30th it moved over here, so they, that's sort of like how they drew the diagram, it's just astronomical symbols. It's just, it just sort of star art, there's nothing in it. Now, at the same time, if you wonder, they're just doing it in England or somewhere else. This was in Gray, Tennessee on May 21, these rings. And I won't get into it, the astronomy, but I looked, measured how big they were exactly from the diagrams, and there's a ratio of three quarter for the inner and the outer rings, it's called the Baromian rings. And you go to the one in England a few days later, and they're all square root of three over two. Now that's just the square root of three quarter, like that twice is three quarter. And and you had a and what it, and very simple, just measured it. So that was the Bromian rings. That's the Bromian cross. That was in Tennessee, and this is in in England. So you've got a worldwide 
You've got a worldwide crop circle phenomenon choosing landscapes and they're staying hidden, but there's no doubt there's a worldwide coordinated effort to do crop circles and choosing various places. And I'm waiting for the fifth one. I said, tonight I said, with three rings, four rings, maybe the next one has five rings. So I'm waiting tonight. I thought there might be one on June 5th. It wasn't. So I'm waiting for another crop picture. I should be one when I get home tonight <laughs> to see what are they going to do next? Are they going to have five rings on the next one? I was going to put it in here. It hadn't, it hadn't there was nothing yet. Where are they going to do it? And these also look like what are called Celtic knots. This is a certain kind of Celtic knot, and that's a called a shot Celtic shield knot. So it just shows you how complex it is. You've gone through a tremendous amount of information. And that's where we are. And the season's just beginning. It's just, just beginning. We haven't, and this is where we are right now. So just to conclude, we've got plenty, we'll conclude. 25 years, modern crop pictures come from another space or time. But they're made by small UFOs or wormholes, which we don't have today on Earth. We see both, wormholes and small UFOs, okay? True facts about this very important crop pictures have been ignored by the mainstream science and debunked by the intelligence agencies, just like they debunked UFOs. Most crop pictures are beautiful works of art rather than communications. Any messages are highly coded. They don't say earthquake May 29, they've got it highly coded. So whether they don't want to change the timeline or whatever, I don't know, but this is how they do it. Both geometry and numerology are important when trying to understand these images. So we study triangles and we study numbers, like the date it forms six might be, there was just one in Holland on June 5th, and that's, my wife says, I don't believe in the June 5th. I said, wait, there'll be one with five tomorrow. So sure enough, I would say, look at this. <laughs> there was five rings on June 5th. So they tend to draw, the date tends to be coded in the, in the image some way. Any real crop picture fits into a carefully chosen landscape, which enhances its meaning. Now, you wonder why this is. This doesn't make any sense if you're making a crop picture on the ground. But if you're sitting up in space in a cloaked spacecraft, and you're looking down on Earth, bored, waiting for the Earth people to do something, <laughs> doing some art competition, it makes perfect sense to look at places in the field and say, oh, that looks like a duck, or that looks like a snake, and draw a crop picture there. It's a very sensible way to do it, and that's how it works, okay? So it's very sensible if they're made in space, everything I've shown you. So it makes no sense if they're made from the ground, and they're all like that. Now, it's a, although it's been going on for 25 years, there are hints, now I want to give you a promise, that the year 2016 will be different, and will be a time of eye-opening and revelation. So there's definitely hints that 2016, starting about December, the ET reality will be known by everybody. You won't be alone after that. There'll be, people will be shocked, but it'll become known. It's hint, I can see it over and over again. Wow. Over and over again, I can see images like that, like, and the code is actually three years after the Mayan calendar ends is the big one of the codes. The Mayan calendar ends after three more years, he's doing going to do something. I don't want to, but this is just my hint, my time hint. <laughs> Thanks. I thought it was enough. That was enough. Around the, oh, so three years after the end of the Mayan calendar, 2015, not 2016. Yeah, December, December 2015, maybe the first event, but maybe 2016. They're both, both dates show up in crops quite a lot. But I don't know why. I just saw one, and believe me, I see the dates almost every one. Ah. Every one I see one, like they're hinting. They're not saying but hints. Yeah. I've been waiting a long, long time for this. Yeah. So I just want to thank everybody to finish. We thought, I think, many thanks all of the researchers. And if you want to find out about their various ways on Facebook, the major website is Crop Circle Connector with Mark Fossil, Stuart Dyke, and Julian Gibsoni. Mark is just an ordinary fellow like me. He lives in Bristol with a golden retriever, a much beloved Golden Retriever Aspen. Stuart's a very great fellow. Julian coordinates the photography with the drones. There's some, in, there's some professional competitive. Steve and Karen Alexander do some of the best photos. There's some professional comp, competitiveness among all these groups, you have to realize. But I'm mentioning everyone. Mr. Jaro is the drone photographer, a young man with a wife and kid. Paul Jacobs is the ground photographer. Lucy's very famous. There are at least a lot of researchers in Holland, I don't want to not mention anyone, Janet Osebard, my friend, Bert Jansen, Robert, who has this psychic thing. There's Linda Howe of Earth Files, and there's Jaime and Fernando from Mexico, who I met in England last year. So I think with that, we've covered enough. <laughs> we're going to stop. I can show more. Nope, we're going to stop there. So that gives you an overview of everything. <laughs>